My previous video looked at the realistic scenarios where we price a bond on a settlement date that's in between the coupon dates. Now I'll look at unrealistic scenarios, which are much more common on a financial exam like the FRM and CFA, and that is when we price a bond where the settlement date happens to coincide with a coupon date or when we just originate the bond, because in that case, there's no accrued interest flat price equals full price, and we can just use the time value of money keys. So I just do three things here, three basic big steps. First, we'll just check our assumptions with the setup briefly, and then I'll show you solving for price under three different compound frequencies, and then solving for yield also under three different compound frequencies. <laughs> My previous video in this playlist priced a bond under what I called a realistic scenario. That is when the settlement date occurs in between coupon dates. And then we had accrued interest, which separates the full price from the flat price of the bond, or we could say cash and quoted price. Here, I'll look at what I would call an unrealistic scenario. However, this would be the most common on an exam like the FRM CFA. By unrealistic, I mean we're pricing the bond when the settlement date happens to coincide with the coupon date, including the special case of when the bond originates. If that's the case, that's the only time. That is when the settlement date is the same as a coupon date or origination, including origination, that's the only case in which there's no accrued interest and therefore the full price equals the flat price and we avoid having to deal with that difference. We don't need to use the bond worksheet, therefore we can just use the time value of money key functions that are on the third row in the TA, in the BA, uh, Texas Instruments BA2+. Plus. just want to be mindful of when we're using this, this is a discounted cash flow and therefore we're really pricing the full price or cash price of the bond. However, being on a coupon date, that will happen to coincide with the quoted price or the flat price. There is no difference, but it is a discounted cash flow. So before I look at my examples, I have three sections here. First, just to check the setup, because after all, we don't want to do this and not be confident about what settings we're using. And I have here, you can see, uh, PYCY, I enter those variables, or I, I can change those variables by hitting the second function. And then right here, I get payments per year. P forward slash Y, the up or down arrows indicate that I can cycle through variables. In this case, it happens to be only two, so it's the same as a toggle. This enter is telling me I can enter to confirm. So I'm getting the defaults and we don't want to change them. I think I think what I do here is typical for what most people do here. We can change them, but in general, when we solve these bond pricing problems for the exams, we set these to one. And put another way, we don't let the calculator assume there are multiple payments during a period or multiple compounds within a period. Rather, we do the translation deciding what a period is. Right, If it's annual compounding or discounting, then one period per year. If it's semi-annual, two periods per year. If it's quarterly, four periods per year. We do the manual translation such that for each one period, there's only one payment and there's only one compounding within that one period. So we leave these as they are. If we change them, you will get different results than we typically get on an exam. So I just wanted to show you them here. And I could hit enter just to confirm the default. I'm getting this, so you can see a small left triangle pointing to the left. That confirms that this value has been entered into the worksheet. It was the default, so I didn't really change anything. I've also mentioned in the previous video that if I hit second, now I'm on this row right here, I go second, uh, begin. I'm getting this important choice as to whether I am setting annuities due or ordinary annuity and also called in advance or in arrears. You'll notice I've, bold, I've bolded in arrears because that is typically our assumption when we do these bond pricing problems. Put another way, let's say we purchase a bond today. We are not expecting the coupon immediately in general. In general, if it's an annual pay coupon bond, 
We purchased the bond today. We expect that first coupon one year later at the end of that first period. So that would coincide, coincide with in arrears or ordinary, which again is the default. But if I go second set, see here, second set, I toggle this to annuity due or in advance, and I do get the visual feedback that I've got that set. So in general, you want to pay attention to that. If that's set in the upper upper right, unless you really mean to be doing that for a certain specific kind of problem, it may be the cause for why your results differ. And I'm going to just set and set and go right back uh, to ordinary annuity or in arrears, and my visual feedback disappears, indicating I'm at my default. Okay, so I just want to do solve for price, solve for yield, because these are the most common. And then I've got here just a word problem, very typical of the kind of word problems that I've written in our uh, in our own uh, database. Oftentimes you'll have it'll be mine here are very succinct. Sometimes the essential assumptions are are buried in a longer, more wordy paragraph. But here I tried to write as pretty brief as I could. So here's the first problem that asks us to solve for price. A $100 face value 10-year bond pays a, let's say, semi-annual coupon of 4% with a yield of 6%. What is the bond's price? Or actually what I want to say here is this could be semi-annual or annual or quarterly in terms of that coupon payment. So I actually have all the assumptions that I need. I've said many times that in terms of inputs, we always, unless otherwise specifically told, want to assume the inputs are per annum, right? So I could have been more wordy here, but this 4% coupon rate is 4% per annum, regardless of whether it pays annually, quarterly, semi-annual. So even if you say semi-annual 4% coupon, it's a 4% per annum, payable twice per year. Same with the yield. This 6% could say per annum, but doesn't need to because implicitly it's a per annum assumption. So I have here what I, I have the four inputs. The way that I think about this is we have a time value of money third row. There's five variables here. These are generic time value of money. They map to the different bond variables, right? FV generically is future value. In terms of the bond, it's the face value, also called the par value or principal. So the general way to think about this is that we input four and we solve for the fifth. So in solving for the price, that means my price is right here, generically present value. In terms of the bond, it's current price. We're going to solve for the PV by inputting the other four and then coming back and computing the answer. When I go to the yield, I'm going to input, I'm going to be solving for the yield here per period. And so that, that means I'm going to be inputting the other four and solving for the yield. So it's input the four that we've got. Solve for the fifth that we're looking for is generally how it works. So I'll take this problem and let me just start with the annual. Whoops. That. First, I'll do it annually, right? So I think about the, this is this the way that I do it. I go, I like to go left to right. Don't need to do that. But first is my N. That's the number of periods. If I'm doing here an annual bond, it's 10 years. So I input the 10 N. And then now the yield is 6%. Well, I was, I'm was i given that. I input. And notice as soon as I do the, as soon as I hit the function here, I am getting that small uh, left point, triangle pointing left. That means the value has been entered into the worksheet. Okay, I'm going left to right. I've done N. I've done yield. Here's my price or present value. Well, that's what I'm going to solve for. So I skip it. My payment well, it's a 4% coupon on a $100 bond, so that's $4 per year. I enter that into payment, and then my future or face value is 100. I enter that. I've entered four, and now I just come back and compute the price, and I get uh, $85 and looks like about 28 cents. 
we get a negative and uh, I don't make much of that. We could have entered a negative for the coupon or payment and for the face value and then we've got a positive here. But if you think about it, if we purchase the bond, we need to spend that money. So that would be a cash outflow with negative. And then the coupons and the principal come back to us in the opposite direction, right? So outflow inflow are opposite directions just as the negative for the payment here is an opposite sign of the positive coupon and face value that we'd receive. Okay, so I priced this bond, this 10-year bond, with an annual pay coupon. Now I go to, I'm going to just change one assumption here. Notice that this here means I've got three different uh, uh, payment frequencies on the coupon. Now I'm just going to go to a semi-annual pay coupon bond, right? So still a 4% rate, but now it pays semi-annual. This, this is a little more realistic, actually. Okay. Now, the way that we do this is we are mindful ourselves of what each what one period is. If the coupon pays uh, semi-annually, that's twice per year, we have six-month periods. So our 10-year bond has 20 semi-annual periods. So I go N equals 20. And now I'm still going left to right. My yield, my yield is 6% per annum, but per period, that's 3%. So I enter 3 as the yield. My coupon payment was $4 a year, but we're paying semi-annually. So it's twice $2 every six months. And then my 100 face value doesn't change at all. I come back and I compute the price, and I'm just checking my spreadsheet, and I do get the correct answer. Notice my price here is different. It's uh, slightly less, $85.12. Okay, finally, let me do quarterly. Now the coupon, so still the coupon rate is still 4% per annum. Still the yield is 6% per annum, but the coupon is going to be paid quarterly or four times per year. And now, I, so I go back to the end, and maybe I just want to use the calculator to do my math instead of doing my head. It's okay, I can do that. I do that. This is how I do it. I do it every time, even when I because uh, I just don't want to uh, risk a mistake. So I'll say 10 times 4, 40, 40 quarterly periods in 10 years. Put that into N. And my, uh, let's see, next is yield. I could take the 6, divide by 4. If I didn't want to do it mentally, that's 1.5 for my uh, per period yield. My payment, my coupon is uh, $4 per year or once per quarter. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do the math. I'm just going to put that in. And instead of doing my future value, I'm just now going to invoke um, the idea that my 100 was already stored there. So after you practice this for a while, um, in some cases, you can just change the one variable that you want to change, right? My 100 is already there. I can trust that. So I'll now go back and compute the price. I get an even lower value, $85.05, and that is correct. Okay, let's just go to the final sequence here. Now I'm going to solve for yield. So I'm going to clear out here. And now my problem is only slightly different. $100 face value, 10-year bond, pays a, let's say, it's either semi-annual or annual or quarterly. And I'll start with annual. Put that back. Coupon of 4%, and here's the only difference. Now we're told it trades at a price of 107, and we want to solve for the yield. So again, um, we're generally going to be given four of the five, and this time we're going to be computing for the yield. But we want to be mindful of the period. Okay, so let me first do annual. I'll go left to right. I have 10 annual periods for N. I'm going to be solving for the yield. I skip that. Now my price... Now I'm going to do it the way that I do it. I, I like to think of it as we purchase the bond. That's a cash outflow. So I'm going to make that one the negative. I could switch the directions. It's fine. But I like to say, okay, I'm buying the bond, 107. Let me now ne negate it here. That's my cash outflow for the price. Hasn't been entered yet. Now I enter it. See how I get the triangle. It's confirmed. My payment uh, coupon is $4 per year for payment and see how that's positive, right? I purchased the bond as cash outflow. These, but these, so that was negative. The coupons are coming back to me as positives. And for my, also my 
uh, face value of 100 is that's the principal coming back at the end of the bond, at the end of 10 years. I've entered what I need. I come back and compute the yield. And just checking 3.1722% is the correct yield given this price, right? Yield is generally a function of the price. We observe a traded price and then we infer the yield. Okay, now let me go to semi-annual. And so we know that my periods is going to go, I have 20 periods, I'm skipping the yield. Well, my price actually, I'm just gonna leave that in there because my negative 107 uh, was, is already there. Payments per period though, of course, that goes from four this time to two. And my face value uh, also, I don't need to change, right? So notice in this case, we left the two variables alone that did not change. Now I come back and compute the price. And here's the important part. What am I computing? This is the six month yield, right? Our period now here is semi-annual or six months. This is a six month yield. That's not how we wanna leave it, right? Inputs and outputs almost always Get, are assumed per annum and get translated back into per annum. So in the case of semi-annual, this is actually called bond equivalent basis, but that just means we want this back in a per annum. So we need to remember to multiply by two, the number of periods per year. Let me check that, 3.174, that's correct. It is slightly higher. Now, so that's what we're getting for uh, a yield per annum with semi-annual compound frequency. And finally, so let's just make sure we've got this with quarterly. Now I'm gonna go and do the quarterly and let's just say I wanna, I'm wanna. i insecure about that. 10 times four is 40, I put the N in. Present value, don't need to change it. My payment is only $1 each quarter, four times per year. Don't need to change the future value as well. Notice how, how really quick that could be once I get handy with it. And then I come back, compute the yield, that looks low because it's per quarter. So I wanna to need to multiply that by four to make it per annum. Check my number, yes, that's correct. It's slightly higher. And again, what is this? Three, the, a yield or yield to maturity given the observed price of 107 of 3.18% per annum with quarterly compound frequency or with quarterly compounding. So that's really it. That'll cover a lot of the uh, basic use cases that you might see on a financial exam. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of my next video. Thank you.